Hello, my name is Trotter. Welcome to part two of the Temple of Time tutorial. We're going to pick up right where we left off. So last time we did a very long tour of the temple itself. There was a lot to see, a lot to talk about. We did the first phase, a lot of measuring. Hope you've got all that correct and everything down. Uh, but by the way, the dimensions given in, in the opening of the last tutorial is for, I think it's for the box surrounding the uh, temple here with the granite. I'm pretty sure those are those those two dimensions. Uh, but but either way, don't let that throw you. Just go by the measurements that we counted off for the temple itself. And uh, we will go ahead and start on the next one. So I think for the duration, we should probably be starting here at the front. Since that's going to be like the, uh, like, like the tallest section. Just to keep everything consistent. Uh, so here... We want to add another layer of cobblestone slabs, seven of those, and then seven cobblestone behind that for the next step to uh, get up to the, uh, the entrance. And behind that, we, of course, just have all these, uh, these infill blocks back here. You don't actually have to build these. Uh, it'll save you quite a lot of materials if you don't. You can just leave that hollow. And, and uh, beside that, uh, all the dimensions for this phase are going to be identical to the last ones because we are just building up. But we are alternating a little pattern here that we're doing with the cobblestone and the tuff. Now these blocks are these blocks are kind of similar, so it may be a little difficult to tell. Uh, but all, all, all through the building, you should be using like an equal part of cobblestone and tuff together. Like like that's uh, that's roughly how that should work out. But I'll try and go through here uh, to get this pattern. Uh, the you don't have to follow the exact pattern of the cobblestone and the tuff that I've laid out, you can just alternate them. Like you see here, we just got one one tuff and then like four cobblestone and then one tuff and then two cobblestone and then like five tuff and then like, you know, one cobblestone, two tuff, two tuff there, one cobblestone, one tuff, uh, four, four, what, four or five cobblestone there, and so on and so forth all the way around the building. Uh, just be very random with how you put these blocks down. If If you want to do something to be um, like, like if you want to take perhaps the guesswork out of doing the pattern, if that's a little bit too much, what you can do is you can, for every two blocks of cobblestone you put down, you can just put down two blocks of tuff, and then go back to two blocks of cobblestone, two blocks of tuff, so on and so forth a as we go here. Uh, that's not how I did this building, uh, because I originally made it all in cobblestone, and just in MC Edit, I used a simple brush. To, to do a variable replace, which is randomly replaced uh, uh, cobblestone with tough, uh, but but in like a a one-to-one uh, -one ratio, so they should all still be in balance. And of course, I, I did that because if we can stand back here and take a look from afar, we can see that that our banding pattern, because it's all random and everything, it makes a nice brickwork pattern and gives us a very easy uh, way to do just just a very simple gradient. It's not like it's uh, it's not like an advanced gradient that some people will do, where they'll do like you know, ten different block types, and do like a gradient all the way from the bottom to the top, and, and with various patches in between. Uh, this building is already difficult enough, so I didn't want to make make that uh, too much of a burden for you. So we're just doing simple simple uh, random gradients with the cobblestone and the tuff. Uh, but I am going to, for the sake of completeness, uh, because this is already going to be quite a long tutorial series anyway, maybe four or five parts, depending. Because we do have 175 slices to get through. Uh, I'm just going to go here and show you everything just close up as I can, if you want to replicate it more exactly. But like I said, you can just alternate, like, you know, there's, there's a bit there with the two blocks of tough and then the two blocks of cobblestone. As we go, if you want to make just a simple pattern and you don't want to do, uh, you don't want to dwell too much on the details. A uh, lot of lot of talking, I know, but uh, it's a very complicated building. We're gonna have to do quite a lot of explanation as we go. Uh, but uh, don't let that uh, daunt you. Just uh, do it one block at a time, and then everything will work out. All right, we passed the center line at the back. 
And um, because I had the entire building already built and, and put together when I did the brush, uh, the, the patterns are going to be non-symmetric. For this, uh, I mean, you can only really see half the building at any one time anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But I will try and show it to you, at least on, on, the, on the bottom parts. I assume as you're going to build this, you probably don't want to follow the exact pattern I've laid down. You just want to, to randomize your toughened cobble blocks. But for the first couple of phases, I'll give you a good idea of what that might look like. If you want to do a more advanced uh, a block scattering and have it be a little less regular. Although the, the 2 to 2 block ratio will be just fine to use. I use that on the Roman stuff all the time. And I would have on this building, but it was, well, I mean, it was, it, it was entirely too big to go back and do all of that by hand again after I had already built it a couple of times. And I thought, I thought the random pattern looked, uh, looked a little better, actually, on this. But that's just me. Uh, all right, so next phase. Uh, so here for the doorway, uh, we've got a block of tough there, which we shouldn't have. Um, and behind that, uh, right on our center line, we want to have uh, three blocks of calcite. And I'm not really sure why that block is missing. Uh, three blocks of calcite for our entrance threshold. And all, all the missing blocks that we see down the center here, uh, that, that's where our, uh, our red carpet is going to be going. We can see, we can see that over there. Uh, but for, for these, since carpet won't really float in midair, at, at least I don't think it does. Does it? No. Because carpet for sure doesn't uh, uh, doesn't float in midair. Uh, you're going to want to fill in this, this uh, middle part here with some extra cobblestone. And let's take a look here. We've got some stone brick stairs. This is one of these buildings. Uh, we are alternating the layers. So half the layers in this building are going to be stone bricks like we had on the bottom there. And we're going to be the, the alternate layers are going to be the ones with the cobblestone and the tuff decoration. We can ju just barely see that, that banding effect that we have on, on the building. All right, so I'm going to go around here and show you where we're going to be placing down all the stairs. Pretty much on top of all the cobblestone and the tuff that we placed, we're going to, now going to be placing a layer of stairs. Stone brick stairs right side up. You can see behind those we do have some of the infill blocks sticking out there. Uh, now there are going to be a couple of places in this tutorial I did try to optimize this build with with the infill blocks so you only have to build a few but I didn't do it quite correctly. Uh, I, I should have removed the stairs instead of converting them to full blocks I think. So so this block here is going to be sticking out and this should be replaced with a stone brick block and over here too we see this little corner sticking out that's going to have to be replaced with a stone brick block as well. Um, there are going to be a few more places as we go through the building. It's not just all on this bottom layer. So as we go through that, I'll try and point that out so you can, uh, you can correct the design on that. Uh, it's one of those things, I didn't notice that that was a problem until I started uh, looking at the phases yesterday in preparation for part one. I guess that was the day before when I did part one. Uh, but but uh, in, anyway, it was, we'd already, I'd already sliced up the 175 phases and this video had already taken long enough to produce. I didn't want to delay it anymore for you, so I thought it would just be better. If we continued on and I just explained the uh, the few places where the blocks are sticking out where they shouldn't be for for the infill. Like, like here's another one right here and there. And right here and right there and there's a oh, there's a stray uh, stone brick stair back there that doesn't need to be there. There's probably going to be a few places like that. 
as we go. I do always try and uh, and get the buildings to be block perfect. Uh, but invariably, when when I start slicing them up and recording it up close and personal, there's always these little places right here uh, that that get missed. Like if I just have an like an an eighth of a block sticking out right there, that's pretty easy to miss when they're all gray and everything. There we are. We're just taking a look at the exterior now. We're going to take a look at, uh, oh, let's uh, fix that there. We're going to be taking a look at the floor patterns next, so don't worry about that. We just want to establish the outer edge where all these stone bricks are. And then we will go back and fix that. So, so we're, we're back here at the back. Here's our center line poking out of the building. So now that we've taken a look at half of that, we are going to go all the way back here to the front. And now start taking a look at the, the floor patterns. And there's no good way to describe this other than to just show it to you from the top down. And you, uh, you should be pausing the video and replicating the block patterns. It's, they're, they're all regular repeating patterns. You can see on the edges here, we have the deep slate tiles, and then we have the calcite in between that for the black and the white. So we're going to go down the nave, the, the, the central section, first. And I think with, uh, especially with, with the infill blocks and everything, it should be pretty easy for you to count because it's just a simple checkerboard and diagonal pattern here. So it's going to take a while for you to build, but I don't think you should have all, all that much trouble since it is just a simple floor pattern. All right, so we're going to stop here and go go back down here and uh, take a look at uh, this section here. In fact, let's take a look at uh, the, this uh, uh, out, outward uh, tower section here. You remember, this is the floor of that small little chapel I showed you. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of little small chapels in the Temple of Time overall, just like so. And here is the pattern for the aisles. And as you can see, it's just a simple repeating pattern, just a simple straight checkerboard. I don't think you're going to have any trouble making this one. Right there. So let me go up and give you a good top-down view of this entire floor section. It's pretty important to get this right, so we need to slow down and take our time on it. Right there, and now you need to mirror the entire thing on the other side of the center line over here. Now let me just get a, a top-down view of this entire section. And then let's get a top-down view of the second chamber. The octagonal section where the Master Sword is. Uh, so, uh, wh where's a good place to start this? I think we should actually start this here at the back, right along our center line. So, let me get a good, a good view of this here. So, let me just um, kind of draw that in. So, our center line is passing right, 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 right through here, where the red is. And let me just, uh, let me see. Let's see if I can get all of this in at a glance. We'll, we'll take a look at this here, and then I'll zoom in a bit on these sections in case whatever screen you're looking at this on isn't, isn't quite big enough. If it's only a phone, you might need to, we might need to do the close end stuff. All right, that's to the outer wall. Let's go back here, move over a bit, and go forward again.
All right, let's move back here and capture now the third section of it. All right, and of course, just draw your center line and mirror the entire design on the other side here. And remember, we've got these little sections over here because this is where that, uh, that, that door goes to our stairwells that are going to be hidden in the middle of the structure. And we can see I left quite a thick wall uh, as a separation between the, the, the first and second chambers. And I kind of did that because I think a lot of you are going to want to build some sort of automated door. For that, we also had to have space to uh, route the stairwells on either side there. So that's, that's what this space is getting used for. But the central space here, I left for you to be able to build a nice big uh, uh, redstone doorway of whatever design you want to do, uh, which is, of course, I can't include because, uh, you know, building channel, not... Not, not, not a redstone channel. I'm going to have to go to, to somebody else to, to figure that one out. I cannot help you with it. Uh, so sorry. Uh, but anyway, let's start back here at the door on the next phase. So we are now putting, we've got the foundation for the temple itself set. We've got the floors set. Now we're going to be rolling out the red carpet and uh, doing the basic, uh, the basic design for the, the superstructure of the, of the temple itself. Looks really good from a distance over here. So, uh, well, you know, if if you have the render range for it, anyway, quite nice. But anyway, uh, we we are digressing. Uh, so here, uh, this is where our center line is, right here where the torch is. And uh, we want to place a couple of tree trunks on either side, and then a bit of calcite. And we're going to take a look at the exterior, and then we're going to come back and swing around and take a look at the interior. It's going to be our pattern for how we're going to be doing the rest of the tutorial. Exterior first and then in, in and then interior. All right, so let's take a look at all this around here. Uh, we're doing another cobblestone and tough phase, as you can see. Alternating the blocks, whatever pattern you want to do. Uh, now here for our window frames, they are all made out of uh, calcite. I believe our nice, our nice white window frames. Uh, the design I went with for the building didn't really leave enough space to put a second frame on the exterior. I thought it looked pretty good, well, just just pointing out all the windows and everything. Otherwise, it it would it would also look a bit too gray. That's something I did in Bedrock Cathedral, but it's not something I did for for this one. Of course, that that'll be a, that'll be a bridge recost whenever I do the the Bedrock Cathedral. Uh, that uh, that 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 might even be later this year. I'll have to see. I want to I want to go back and take a look at that building and fix some things in it probably before I release it again as a full tutorial. It's been released for quite a long time, but that building took uh, it took many months on itself just to design. Indeed, the Temple of Time itself took took about oh I don't know half ha half that time maybe. It's a smaller and a bit more more simplified in some of its details so. But I had less experience when I was doing Bedrock Cathedral. But uh, cathedrals in Minecraft are always really hard to do, at least to design. So I've saved you all the work from that. All you have to do is follow the patterns I'm presenting to you here. And you should be able to get a really nice cathedral here for the Temple of Time. I don't think it's any less of a nice building than Better Rock Cathedral. It's just uh, it's just a different design of the cathedral. All right, swinging around here, we can see we've got the inner details for where our uh, stairwell is beginning there. I'm not sure how many geodes you had to find to get all this calcite. I would be interested to uh, to to know that though, if any of you kept count. That is, 
Or perhaps you just uh, had your friends go out and gather it for you. And uh, and just buy it off them for diamonds. That'd probably be, uh, that's probably a good approach. You're going to have enough trouble just building it without uh, also having to do all the gathering. But if you are doing both, uh, I wish you I wish you well in that endeavor. So let's take a look at the interior now. We're back at the doorway. We've got uh, calcite and uh, chiseled quartz here for those. Now, according to all the infill blocks that we left on the last phase, that should be uh, that should give you a good guide as to where we're going to be placing all this calcite and quartz and everything. We can see we just got just a few more infill blocks here. If you do want to make your cathedral hollow with the infill blocks, I mean, you can just use uh, more cobblestone if you want to, or smooth stone, or just whatever block you have spare. I mean, I suppose you could just infill them with dirt if you wanted to, but then, you know, it's not uh, not, not very structurally sound to, to infill your cathedral with dirt. Probably attract a lot of Endermen to your cathedral, though. They'd be trying to reach into the walls and pull out the dirt, I think. That'd be really bad. All right, so here, going down the aisles, we just got simple repeating patterns here for the bases of the, uh, the structure. We are going to have to use a lot of uh, cathedral-specific words in doing this tutorial, but I'm going to try and, and spare you from the, the full vocabulary of those. I don't even know them all myself. Uh, but uh, I, might, I might brush up on some of those. Because it was a lot of fun learning all the Latin words for the Roman Domus, but that was quite a while ago. So here for the central altar, uh, I I thought it was going to be fun to use these uh, these end portal frames to put the spirit stones in, but uh, I I think if especially if you're doing this in survival, what I would do is just replace these with some more chiseled quartz blocks, and then just put three item frames on the top of them here, and then you should be able to slot in your stones uh, like like that there. And you can possibly hook those up to your redstone door to make sure it won't open unless you have all the all the three stones or something. And there, that that'd be that'd be pretty cool. You should have enough space under the altar here and the cathedral and everything to uh, get that um, to, to 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 get that sorted out. I think. All right, so we're here at the altar. So everything around the edges, you want to go and duplicate that from what I've just shown you. And down the middle here, just straight down the middle, we want to run our red carpet. Just straight down there, all the way back to the entrance there. And another thing I skipped over is you want to go around and put all the foundations for the piers right here. I mean, these should technically be columns. Uh, it's, it's actually interesting. The way, um, uh, the way the Gothic cathedrals were developed, th these, were, th these would be uh, the same as like a, a column in a Roman basilica. That's what they started with. Uh, but over time, they, they made the columns really tall and really thin, just taller and thinner as they went, and they kind of morphed in, into being uh, a, a, a series of attached columns, uh, which uh, are, are really fine details that we can't replicate at this scale in Minecraft, sadly. Um... Uh, but yeah, that was how those originally started. They they were originally columns, but then but then but then they morphed into more uh, more more delicate and shapely forms into into the piers and everything that we see today. And there's quite a few surviving old buildings that we can we can go look at. Well, I mean that that people have gone and looked at. We we can't look at them, but uh, people have gone and looked at them, and they've made, they've made books and everything about. Uh, that process. Where's going to be the good place to start at the back? Let's start at the back, all the way at the back, right here where our center line should be poking out of the building for the second chamber. So we're going to start back here and then take a look, uh, take a look counterclockwise around the room.
All right, we've got our little stairwell forming right there. And then I know these uh, block patterns look, look pretty random at the moment, but, but as we go, you're going to see how it's all going to fit together. All right, so here we are uh, at, the, at the altar platform for the Master Sword. We've got uh, quartz uh, stairs, there's quartz slabs, four stairs, and then calcite behind that, and then the deep slate tiles behind that, and then the calcite behind that. And then, of course, in, in, in the center of everything, we have uh, uh, the Triforce emblem laid out with, with diamonds right here. And this, this right here would be a good spot, or perhaps here. Yeah, per per perhaps there. Uh, would be a good spot, like if you have one of those armor stand add-ons where you can make them invisible. You could probably have like an armor stand holding, holding, up, your, holding up your Master Sword here. And uh, you might even be able to put down a block or a half slab here and sink it down. And do like a, a very cool sword in stone type thing right here where you can uh, either, um, I don't know if you'd be able to remove it, but you could certainly place a sword there, perhaps a diamond sword or a netherite sword, uh, depending. Uh, just, just to add just a, a, li a little bit of colorful detail to your uh, Temple of Time. Uh, I don't know how to do those, so I haven't included it in this tutorial uh, because that'd probably be a tutorial video in itself, just figuring, figuring that out and, and just attempting to show you. And not everyone's going to be able to do it, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to include it. That's why I just threw it in the chest for for part one and everything. Although you could just put it in in an uh, ender chest if you want to, make sure nobody can take your master sword. All right, and let's go on to the next phase. I don't know how long we've been recording. We're only we're only a couple of phases in, so you, this is going to be a long, long series. Uh, so here we can go ahead and place down our door if you want to. This uh, the front section was not big enough. Uh, to fit in a, a full redstone door, not not exactly. I mean, I don't know if you can fit in a uh, foot foot in. I don't know if you can fit in. I mean, I suppose you do have to walk in, so you technically you technically foot in. But um, I I don't know if this space is wide enough to be able to put in some sort of flying machine redstone door that would like go up and down. I don't really know how those work, so I can't advise you on that. But if you want to play around with something something a little bit more advanced in this particular, just you know. Just having a dark oak door there, you can do that. But I just want to point that out before we go. So let's take a look around the exterior now. We're also doing the windows. We are doing for this alternating uh, full blocks and panes. And we're going to be doing that. I'll just do a little design here as we go. As this extends up, every place you see the, the, the red here, these would be full blocks of glass. And in, in, in between these is where we would where the torches are, where we'd be placing the panes. So we're going to be alternating full blocks and panes as we go. Also, I've only done this for the light blue stained glass because I thought it would be uh, I thought it'd be easier on on you uh, just to have one color. Uh, but but if you want to make a more a kaleidoscope type effect and do other stained glass colors, you can just just mix them in like we're doing with the, the cobblestone and the tuff. You can do that if you want to with the stained glass. You can try and do the same pattern for every window if you want to. Or you can mix and match and just make it more of a kaleidoscope. Um, and uh, recommended colors for that, I mean, you can use your own custom colors if you want to. But my, uh, but my recommended colors for that would be to add in uh, red, purple, and blue. Maybe a bit of cyan. We're using a light blue here. But those are generally the colors of stained glass I, I tend, to, tend to prefer. If you want to, you can work in a bit of green here and there as well. Maybe just a couple of specks of yellow here and there as well, but 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 uh, not uh, not not too much. Uh, but because we have just a simple, you know, like a gray and um, and black and white color scheme for a lot of the interior, except for the red carpet, I think it would all match pretty well. But I will leave those exact details up to you, and we will we will continue on. I think uh, I can probably only talk for a couple of more phases, so that'll be however much we get through today. And uh, like I said, this is going to be a long, long tutorial series, so we're just going to kind of take our time as we go through it. There's no, no real need in rushing 
because I think this building is so complicated. If I do rush too much, um, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to follow it just quite as well as you might otherwise could. Now, a lot of these window designs are going to be the same, especially on the lower levels. I did try and use the same window design throughout, which uh, can cause, uh, it caused some small issues in some small places, but those are higher up in the building. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cross those bridges when we get to them. All right, so here we are at our uh, dividing wall. And I couldn't really, uh, part of this large window, I, I, I left the window here, even though we do have our stairwells and everything going through that. So some of it gets blocked off with some quartz behind it. Um, but I didn't want to break up the facade of the building too much, so I just sort of left like a dummy window there for that. All right, going going around the edges here. Here now with the diagonal windows. These get a little messy, as you can see. We have to have a, a mix of panes and full blocks. I'm going to try and go really, really slow so you can see just exactly how to do those. And in some of these, it looks like um, that's an infill block. It shouldn't be visible. I think that should get replaced with uh, with one of these, with with a pillar quartz block, right, uh, right there where that torch is. Like it, it, it worked out right here, but I'm not sure uh, why it didn't catch that one there. All right, so here we are at the center line at the back. Uh, and now we're going to fly all the way back to the front and take a look at the interior of the first chamber. Uh, a lot of smooth quartz and stairs on this one, and a bit of calcite, which I think you've already placed the calcite down for the window frame, I should imagine. So we want to run those around here, like so. Inside our little side chapels here at the moment with uh, the stairs. Before we do that, let's take a look at the, the, uh, the columns now. It's just uh, uh, eight blocks of quartz stairs on all four sides on every single one of those going all the way down the nave, like so. And now let's continue down the aisles here. It's going to be much the same pattern, it's just half of a pattern. Because these are technically the, the pilasters on the side of the walls. Uh, the pilasters also help frame out the windows and everything, so it's a, it's a nice detail. All right, here at the dividing wall. A bit of calcite running this way for the upper steps behind the spirit stone altar leading up to the door. And our center line is running right through here, of course. So we can now uh, lay down just a bit more flooring and connect that to the interior right there. So we're just going to kind of pause right there for that and then go back here for the second chamber and take a look at this starting back here. You can place down your dark oak doorway here and build your little stairwell. 
continue on here with the dividing wall. And then here we've got quartz wrapping around a few more slabs and some full blocks here to round out the stairs. And that's going to be the end of the stairs and the platforms and everything. All right, so that's our center line here. Should have already placed everything down, so let me get some altitude. And let's stand back for a moment and take a, take a good look at where we're at at the moment. Let's try and get the entire thing in view. Right there, and then we will, uh, I can, I think I can do another phase for today. Our cathedral is just, it's just barely clipping out of view in the mist over there, so we'll have to say goodbye to that. And we won't see that again until we get a hundred and, what, I don't know, uh, just, just 170 slices off in that direction before we get to the completed model. All right, so a couple of uh, tree trunks on their sides here to finish off the doorway. Like I said, if you're doing a redstone doorway of some design, you can you can figure that out for yourself. Uh, back here, of course, you can see uh, you can now see what, what what I talked about for the alternating of the windows. So for the windows, every place you put a pane, put a full block on top of that. Every place you put a full block, put a pane on top of that. And for the most part, this is another phase where we're alternating the cobblestone and the tuff in, in just, in just the, the random block patterns, just like so. Uh, I think I should take a note. If you are doing what I talked about before with the alternating of the 2x2, the, the two two, if you want to do that particular design, every time for this, when we do a layer of stone bricks in between that, you don't want to do this again. What you want to do is you want to put the cobblestone, I mean, you want to put the tuff on top of the cobblestone and reverse, reverse the order of the blocks just like that if you want to do this particular pattern. Otherwise, just, just randomly put them down. But as you go, try and make sure that, like, like in some places you can see here, it's, it's okay to have it if you want to have it be randomized to have the tuff on top of the tuff. But just don't have like, you know, a whole bunch of tough on top of a whole bunch of tough. Uh, try, try and make it a bit, uh, a bit more random as you go. But like if you're, if you're uh, one of the people that just uses the world download and uses Lightmatica, to fill in blocks, all that work is done for you, so you don't have to think about it too much, I don't think. Uh, but I've never really done it like that. Whenever I want to rebuild one of my own buildings, what I actually do is I will, I will, just, I will just look at the tutorial slices here and just be, re and rebuild it off of that. Because even though I've done the design, I don't remember, like I wouldn't remember where half of these blocks went if I tried to do it again without the benefit of the reference model. So that's why whenever I want to rebuild, I just come here and look at my slices. It's the same as I do for the tutorial video right here. It's just easier for me to look at the slices instead of referring back to the, uh, back to the video. Because I, I, I can remember about half of it, but I need to look at the slices to remember the other half. It's just quicker for me. But of course, you know, it's sliced up this way because it's, it's far too big of a building to try and do the reverse block time-lapse thing on it. I don't even know how many hours it would take to record that. And then once I slowed down the speed, it would take 60% longer than that. So it'd be, it'd be pretty hard to do. That's why once buildings get over a certain size, I, I resort to slicing them up and talking about it instead. Just because, uh, just because of how big it is. And there's a lot of different details in here. Like with, uh, with all the, the missing blocks and everything in the, in the little corners. Down, uh, down there that we talked about earlier. So here we are at the back at our center line. So we, we've taken a look at all that. We're now going to go back to the front and take a look at things from the inside.
Apologies if I babble on too much. When recording, I often think that I do need to talk about something, and I just leave it as, as uh, silence. But I think a lot of you probably don't even listen. You just look at the, uh, you just look at things as I'm going. Because I know most people, they will just look at the tour and then not, and then not watch the rest of the video. So then they never get the benefit of all the extraneous information that I tend to include in these. Which I, I, I do that because, um, I don't know. Because um, I really like, like, like um, how shall I say? Like, like, like when I make these buildings, I always try to learn things about the building. Uh, because I kind of need to do that in order to make a faithful copy of it. Because if I don't, if I don't know reasons for why people did things, it's really hard to render it into blocks. Because in Minecraft, you often have to solve problems all over again uh, that you uh, that you might normally not be aware of. And 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 never never mind the torch placement here. If you're doing this in survival, you're probably going to hide a lot more lighting. And what I've done, so you don't have to worry about the exact places of the torches and everything. But I know some of you like like hearing all the the the, uh, the digressions and everything that I do. I think it uh, it can give you a, a richer understanding of the building you're building as as you're building it, and and maybe increase your motivation for the building. Uh, so so we're going to stop right here for that. And well, well hang on. Uh, here, here for for all the the columns and everything. Uh, just go back and obviously put four by four of the uh, the, the the fluted quartz. No, they're called what lines, pillar pillar blocks. Well, uh, whatever they are, uh, are named. Go ahead and place those down, and then we'll take a look at uh, at the back here, starting at the center line for all the quartz details again. And we also need to take a closer look here at uh, at the glass here for the windows. Because in some of these places, you're going to end up placing panes on top of panes, especially here in the corners. So I need to go really slow on this. It's easier when the windows are flat and they're not done at a 45 degree angle. All right, a bit of quartz here, and the detail for the stairwell. And here, the detail for the dividing wall. Now, I have seen some examples of dividing archways in, in cathedrals. That uh, I know I said they don't have dividing walls, but some of them will have extra arches. The main reason that was done was to mostly to keep the building from collapsing because they just built things a little bit too thin. They, they, they removed just, just too much wall and added too much glass and the whole thing was going to fall down. So they had to add more arches and thicker arches and everything. For that, uh, but, but for the Temple of Time, it very clearly had a dividing wall between these. So we had to, we had to accommodate that design to be more faithful to the, the Temple of Time and everything. And I think uh, I think that was all there was to take a look at on that phase. I don't know if I remarked on the columns here at the back, because the, all of these these share the same design that that the ones running down the nave do. All six of those. I think that that is probably that's probably uh, that's probably a good amount to do for today. So I hope you are enjoying the Temple of Time series, and I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.